It is awesome to see you, Creator. We'll be conducting an OBS versus vMix feature comparison. You'll love this video because it will help you decide what live streaming software is best for your needs. If you're already familiar with OBS Studio, stay tuned because I'm going to reveal features that I'm betting you never knew existed. A big thank you to Sammy Superstar from New Jersey for helping me uncover the available vMix features. Without his help, this video would have never been made. Thank you, Sam. You are the man. Go out and visit his channel. Let's, Let's get some. The primary difference between vMix and OBS is understanding their differences in the live stream industry. In order to gain access to the vMix software, you have to pay a minimum of $60, which gives you some features. These features are all figured out and pre-built into the program. The software works beautifully for Twitch and YouTubers, but it also shines with producers who need a solution for live TV, sporting events, and live corporate interviews. The interface sort of feels like a commercial production software product, and usability is not overly intuitive. OBS Studio comes from the opposite side of the spectrum, where the software is 100% free and the code is open source. This means that features like plugins and scripts are all developed by programmers who absolutely love the software and they're donating their time. In other words, innovation is powered by love and not necessarily profit. And there's a literal army of programmers who have contributed to the software. In my opinion, the interface is easier to learn, but the software is like a box of loose wires. You need to tinker to make it do what you want. Okay, the first feature we're gonna test for both programs is to see if it supports drag and drop. And then we're gonna drag and drop a video, a MP3, a audio, and an image. We'll start with OBS, we'll put in the Fist Kid. Here he is here, put him in. Okay, that works beautifully. We're gonna put a movie in. That works too. Let's move the clouds below Fist Kid here. Boop. There we go. And the audio, does it take it? It does. It's not letting you hear it right now because of the audio settings, but it will accept both a ping, a MP3, and a movie MP4. It works beautifully. Let's move over to vMix and see if it works. Here's an MP3 into the first place. It works beautifully. We're going to put the clouds into the second source. It works. And then Fist Kid number three, it works. So they both support drag and drop into the programs. That's awesome. Now in regards to the software working on multiple operating systems, OBS will work with both Windows, Mac, and Linux. I can tell you that it has some issues with Mac systems. I mean, it does work, but some of the plugins won't work well. I don't know about Linux. If you have a Linux system and you have OBS installed on it, I would love to hear your opinion about whether it really works well with Linux. But I can tell you with confidence that vMix only works with Windows. So for this feature, I think that OBS wins over vMix. Okay, the next feature we're going to talk about is something called SRT. It stands for Secure Reliable Transport, and it is the new protocol to send your live stream data to YouTube or Twitch, okay? Both programs, both OBS Studio and vMix support this, and uh, unfortunately, as, it's, as it stands currently today, YouTube and Twitch and all the other venues do, do not, not accept, accept the, the protocol. protocol. Uh, they're still sticking with RTMP, and that's the one that's responsible for all that latency that we have. But when this gets released, I want you to keep an ear to the tracks and YouTube makes the notification that it accepts SRT, OBS and vMix will be ready to rock. So when that happens, it's gonna be a game changer for live streaming and it's gonna be very exciting. Okay, so we're gonna give this one a tie between both programs. All right, moving on. Okay, let's see if both programs have what's called a T-bar. Let's go to vMix right now. And as you can see, I've got the left screen and the right screen. If I move this little, T-bar right here, look at that, it automatically works perfectly. If I go to OBS, we have a left and right screen, and lo and behold, version 26, right underneath the stinger pull down, there's a little T-bar here, and when I drag it, it also works. This is a tie. Okay, the next one is to look and see which program allows for video scrubbing. In other words, you can queue up a video before it actually goes live, to the audience, okay? So here we are at vMix, and both the preview screen and the live screen have their own scrubbing capability. So as you can see, I'm dragging the live preview area, and it scrubs it up just fine. And on the left here, I can move the cursor and designate where I want to start before I actually move it over to live view. 
pretty slick, right? Let's go over to OBS Studio, and we only have one scrubber, and it is a little bit funky. Let's move the transition over, okay? And I see that it that the playhead is moving. If I hit pause, it pauses the live view, but how do I queue up the left side, the preview side? You have to click on it, then hit the replay button here, and then it plays it on the left. And if you hit pause, then you can modify it, and then you can bring it over to the right with the T-bar. It's not intuitive. It's confusing. They need to put in a second scrub bar for the preview area. I'm going to give the win to vMix on this one. In fact, I'm going to give it a domination for vMix because it's so much easier. Well done, vMix. Okay, the next feature we're going to review quickly is bringing in comments from your social media into the feed so that you can react to the comments as you make your live. vMix has a piece of hardware called vMix Social. It's a standalone. It's a plugin, essentially. It looks like this. If I bring it up, it's it's fairly self-explanatory. You just click on the on the social media platform that you want to connect, and you fill out the necessary information, and you can bring that comment feed right into the live stream. Pretty slick. You can connect Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube, and IRC, which is really neat. OBS doesn't really have a native way to handle this. In order to pull it off on OBS, you have to reference a web page that shows the comments and then bring that in as a URL, modify the CSS so that you get your colors right, and then use it. That's technically not what vMix is doing. I'm gonna give the win to vMix on this one. I love the ability to have a native way to bring in the comments via that interface. The win goes to vMix. Okay, let's take a look at how these programs manipulate images. First, we'll take a look at vMix, and we've got a picture of Sammy here. I'm gonna click the gear and, and select position. And as you can see, if you click the image down below here, it allows you just to move it around at will. If you hit the shift key and drag your mouse, it, re it affects the size. Then your cropping has to be done with these sliders here, okay? And it also had provides a slider here for rotate, which is kind of nice, okay? Now, if I exit out of this and go into OBS, here's an image, it's a, it's a video, it looks like a thermonuclear blast or whatever. As you can see, it's got a bounding box around it and it has these little squares. And this will allow you to very easily manipulate the size of the, of the asset, okay? By dragging it. If you wanna crop, that's easy too. You just hold down your Alt key in a Windows system and grab that handle and now you can crop it by just dragging your mouse which is very very nice to have and then finally if you hold your shift key down and hold a box you can stretch it to anything you want now in regards to rotation all you have to do is right click go into transform and edit transform and you get this box here which basically is equal to what you got in vmix and then there's a rotation parameter here and you just hit up hit the up arrow or the down arrow as you see it's rotating now so you do have that capability to rotate it now in regards to usability OBS gets the win it's really nice to have bounding boxes with handles on the corners and in the midsection because it's so much easier to manipulate size and cropping when you have that capability so if vMix updates their system and provides that they could get the win our next feature in OBS versus vMix is Instant replay. Is it actually doable in OBS at no cost? The answer is yes. Does it do slow-mo? The answer is no, but I'm not 100% sure. I can tell you though, there is a fantastic tutorial by Defrag. Check it out right here. Watch it, it's amazing. Like I said, OBS is a loose box of wires. It's gonna take some tinkering to pull it off, but it is a slick result once you get it working. Now in regards to vMix, oh, it's an amazingly robust instant replay with all kinds of cool things that you can do in regards to uh, recording a sporting event especially, and it will also give you slow-mo instant replay, which is really cool, but... It's gonna cost you 700 bucks to gain access to the functionality. So in regards to who's gonna win, uh, OBS is free, you don't get slow-mo. 
uh, you're going to spend 700 bucks to get it with vMix. I mean, it really depends on who you are. I'm willing to bet that the average person watching this video isn't going to drop $700 to get instant replay. So I'm going to have to give the win to OBS just because most people who are watching this video are not going to be filming sporting events. <laughs> okay, let's talk about layers and find out which program handles layers better. We're going to talk about sources for the most part. Let's take a look at OBS. I've got some asteroids moving around here in this video, and I want to drop in a couple sources. Let's drop in an image of a speaker just for fun here. I'll shrink this down a little bit, and we'll put in some meat. <laughs> some arbitrary images, guys. I don't know. All right, so there we have it. Now, Controlling layers in OBS is really easy. All you have to do to change the order is actually drag the source down. And boom, there's the order change. See how it went behind the speaker? If I want to make the speaker below the meat, I just drag it on down and there you have it. So that is really a huge time saver. Just that one thing alone makes OBS fantastic. Again, you can change the size by dragging the handles on the side. Manipulation of the layers is incredibly easy, but it gets better because if I hit a plus sign, I can hit group and name it meet speaker holder, right? Hit OK. And now I can make the meet part of that group. And when I turn that eyeball off, it turns them both off at the same time. This is very similar to Photoshop. That's how cool it is. And you can lock the whole group so that you can't move it. No matter how much you click it, it won't move. So when you have a lot of assets in one source, it becomes vital to have these kind of controls to quickly manipulate the layer order and the sizing and locking them or turning them off. So this is very easy to manipulate layers and it is very, very cool to have for OBS. Now let's pop over to vMix and see how it handles it. Okay, let's open up the 100 bucks input. I'll double click it and the window that you want to select for all the layers, click multi-view. You've got a series of pull downs where you can select assets to show up within this multi-view. Um, these check marks represent what you can and cannot see when you, when you add an asset. So for example, layer one would be the first layer. If I selected the clouds, um, it shows up, but it shows up above the dollar. I'm not sure why that is per se. It's kind of confusing, but let's add another asset here. I'll add the fist kid over top of that. And if I wanted to change his size, I'd click the position button and then I can change his size. Okay. If I go back to multi view there, you can see it's fixed. You can drag him around a little bit. Uh, you can turn him off and on like that. If you want to add, another input, which is essentially the same as a source, uh, or forgive me, a scene on at OBS, drop down, select that. Oh God, where is it? If there should be another multi-view thing in here. I don't know. It's not intuitive. It is not intuitive. It is confusing. They used to only have five layers. The, the recent update now has 10, but nesting and controlling the assets within the inputs is just generally confusing, confusing as heck. heck. And you can't even uh, group them together. You can, you can nest in nest. That's okay. But you can't lock the layers you can turn them off and on view wise. That's okay. But generally this is really confusing. The win goes to OBS studio. It's just easier to manipulate layers and it's an easy wins every single time. Uh, I guess, you know, if you came in using vMix, you wouldn't really miss it. It's kind of like being born without an arm. You never had one. So why do you care? <laughs> That's a terrible analogy. Uh, you get the point though. If you came in using OBS and came into vMix, this would really bum you out, I think. So I don't know, down the road they could fix it. It's just a matter of redressing the issue and getting it done and making it easier. But for now, OBS is the winner on this one. Let's talk about plugins, scripts, add-ons, all the stuff that you can bolt onto the program to make it more robust. Let's look at vMix. Let's give vMix the benefit of the doubt and say that they have 50 plugins or 50 add-ons that can be bolted on. I know they have a VST plugin that will allow you to modify sound. I know that they have the vMix social program that's almost like a bolt-on. 
but I will give them the benefit of the doubt. I didn't really see anything in the manual per se, and in the forums they do have a forums that's sort of centered around plugins, but not much activity was going in there. I'll give them 50, but when you go to OBS and you see firsthand what's available in regards to add-ons, plugins, scripts, tools, it will blow your mind. For example, let's go there now and I'll give you a tally of what's truly available. Plugins, we have 88 available plugins for the software. Themes, we have 15. Tools, 251 tools, and we have 118 scripts. That is a whole bunch of add-ons, ladies and gentlemen. This is a mountain, mountain of functionality that you can bolt onto your program in OBS Studio. And it is amazing. In fact, I believe in my heart there is no other live stream software package that has this kind of functionality that you can find, download, and insert into the program. It is absolutely amazing. If you're interested in learning about some of these plugins, go to this video right here, click it, and I will see you over there. Anyway, I want to say thank you for watching the video, and I will catch you on the flip side. Stay strong and keep fighting. Don't give up. I will see you soon. All right.